Hi all, welcome to my review on John Wick Chapter 4. This is the fourth film in this 10 year long running franchise now. And to give some background on me as a John Wick fan, I didn't actually watch any of these as they came out. You know, action cinema for me is not my go-to generally. They're not usually movies that get me really excited to go out to the cinema to see. But just seeing over the years how much praise uh, th this movie series has got and seeing these new trailers for John Wick Chapter 4 come out, I certainly did get intrigued about it and thought I wanted to really give the first one a chance. So a couple of months back, I watched that and had an incredible time with it. I thought it was a brilliant action film and really stand out amongst a lot of the other movies we get that come out in this genre. So I binged the first three that week, absolutely loved the first two. I thought the third one had a, a great first half, but went a little bit off the rails with some story uh, and plot lines in the second half of it. Uh, and I didn't end on the best note. I thought, I thought the way they left it was a little bit disappointing. But nonetheless, I was really excited to see what they were going to do with this newest chapter. And I have to say, I have not been disappointed. I went to see this opening night uh, in the UK last night and had a great time with this film. There's so much incredible stuff here. It's got a very focused plot this time around. Unbelievable action sequences and just an overall extremely well-made and entertaining film. I do have a few mixed points about it, which I'll get into later in this review. But generally speaking, if you're an action fan, a John Wick fan, you absolutely have to go out and see this one whilst it's at the cinema. It's a brilliant action film. So let's start off. We'll get into my good points on the movie. So starting off with the action set pieces, as you can imagine, they are absolutely off the scale here. And even more so, I think, than in the first three movies, they've actually managed to outdo themselves. And, you know, if you've seen John Wick movies before, they're not like normal action films where you have just like constant cutting between scenes and using all kinds of camera trickery in order to not entirely show what's going on. So obviously, you know, they can get away with doing easier stunts and using um, special effects work and stuff like that. But in John Wick, I genuinely have no idea how they filmed any of this stuff. When you have people jumping out of four-story buildings onto a car in one big shot where there's no, there's no, you can't see any tricks, it's completely seamless. And people, you know, fighting amidst traffic and cars taking out people. It's just, it's unbelievable. And how long they last, like one takes that last sort of five minutes in a row of so much choreographed action. Absolutely incredible to watch. You just can't take your eyes off the screen. And something I liked about this one, I think even more than the last one, I noticed in three, there were certain moments where you started to feel where fight scenes had been overly choreographed, where it started to feel a little bit more like a planned dance uh, in a way. Whereas here, I think they found ways again to make it so ob obviously, it's, of course, it's all properly choreographed, but it, it's in a way where it does feel more like a, like a, a real fight, I guess. You know, you, I mean, obviously these assassins have all these kind of incredible grapple moves and stuff they do, but there was something about this one where it felt more like he was really intending to kill the people straight away rather than it, it play out like a dance sort of more in some way. So I, I think this worked really well here. And just the scale of it as well, how many people they had involved in a lot of these sequences. There's one scene in the capital of France at the end where they have all of this really fast moving traffic and John Wick's fighting about 30 people amidst this and people are getting taken out by cars. There's this guy with a dog, you know, killing people amidst it. It's just, it's absolute craziness, but unbelievably entertaining. You know, if you, if you want to think about a three hour movie, this is a three hour running time and it does not drag at all because you're just very happy to go along, you know, what, watching this action take place. So the action, as you would expect with a John Wick film, is absolutely second to none. And it makes it really a cut above any of the other action franchises that we get today. I couldn't help but think about how dangerous so many of these stunts must have been as well. You know, scenes where at one point John Wick has this gun, they like these bullets that set people on fire, and you have these long one takes where they haven't cut away of people just on fire running around for a really long time. And, you know, the kind of distance people are falling down stairs and 
I just have no idea how they managed to get the stunt people to do these kind of these kind of tricks. I mean, if you think back to a film like Mad Max 2, that was a film that was renowned for you know having a lot of very practical stunt work, and people did get very seriously injured. I think someone even actually died during the filming of that. So the extents uh, that a crew are willing to go to to really capture an incredible action set piece. Uh, it is really quite breathtaking and it's absolutely the same here. The kind of commitment that Keanu Reeves, the stunt doubles and all the stunt coordinators have put uh, towards this project has just made for an action film, which really is just a cut above the rest. You have some really memorable new characters introduced here. My favourite being Kane, the blind man. So he's this ex-assassin who is roped back into this world uh, into this new French villain on the high table who wants him to help him kill John Wick in order to gain protection and like secure protection for his family going forward after that, even though he's a former friend of John Wick. And he is just, you know, such a charismatic, interesting character, really inventive with the, with the fight scenes and the action uh, with him, given that he's blind. They find actually quite a believable way to have it so that he just fights off pure instinct and predicting the, the other enemy's moves. The fact that he was this expert assassin, but has managed to kind of adapt to being able to fight blind. Absolutely incredible to watch and overall just love this character. And most of all, just love the dynamic between him and John Wick as well. I, I've kind of loved this about the whole franchise where they're these group of guys who are, I mean, they're all bad, really. You know, they're all, they all murder for a living. So they're not exactly the best bunch of guys. But even though they're all trying to kill each other, they kind of have this kind of mutual respect and admiration and like for each other even though that they'll be having a kind of conversation asking how each other's kids and family are doing and then minutes later they're trying to cut each other up and shoot each other and there's just something really like fun and interesting about that dynamic it's almost like these guys in another world would probably all be really great friends but it just so happens to be given their the line of work they in they understand that someone one day who's their friend might be someone who they have to kill the next day but there's something about the, the dynamics of that that I just absolutely love and you can see they all enjoy being around each other and of course you have the new villain which is Bill Skarsgård's character he's the true bad really of the movie he doesn't really have much area of grey he's a very ambitious evil kind of guy who's one of the sort of more senior members of this high table and of course you'll recognize Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise so he has a very distinct look about him but just perfectly cast for this role very very evil quite scary quite an intimidating guy and, a, and an interesting new villain uh, for John Wick to go up against Something here I think they really corrected as well over the previous John Wick was having a much more focused story. You know, John Wick's missions here and objectives are very clear and clearly laid out in the story. So you're able to kind of follow along very well with everything that's going on here. You know exactly why he's going to the places he's going to, what he's trying to achieve there, why characters are doing what they're doing. And you kind of understand the gravity of certain situations and decisions. Whereas I felt like in the third film, you had plot points that were brought in where they should have really been quite big, critical aspects to the story that ended up being quite inconsequential. You know, where John goes to the desert and ends up asking one of the elders for his freedom and why he wants to do that. And, and then he suddenly just kind of turns back on it all, even when you consider everything he went through to get through to that point. It kind of, for me, it just kind of felt like it was a really pointless plot we ended up having, which really should have been one of the big overarching story elements to that film. Here they've corrected that and made sure that everything, every single subplot here has served a purpose to the story. I do think the movie is a little bit overstuffed, so you have a lot of plots in here where I think... You know, we're given that runtime, they had a lot of things thrown in here and you didn't potentially need all of them. But I definitely had a clear understanding of what John Wick was trying to do, why he was doing it, what needed to get done. And I felt like I could very easily follow along with the story. So that's something I think they've definitely done a much better job here than they did with the previous entry. OK, so just want to get into a few of the mixed points now I had about John Wick 4. As I said, overall... It's an incredible film, very, very entertaining, and it would certainly be a recommend. But I think when looking at this objectively, there is definitely a few things here that I think uh, they could have that could have been handled differently. And the first one of them is going to be John Wick himself. 
and I, you know, I love Keanu Reeves. I've watched, I've watched tons of his movie and absolutely love him as a person and an actor. And he's perfectly suited to being in John Wick. I just thought with this one compared to the others, he's brought to an even more minimal level, which doesn't work in the film's favour. So, you know, John Wick, he's a man of few words anyway. And, you know, the few bits of dialogue that he does have are meant to really hit. But here, I felt like they were so sparing uh, with the dialogue he's given that it actually ends up coming across as quite comical. The kind of, you know, when you have a scene play out and he just finishes it with one word, it ended up getting a, a laugh out of the cinema a few times. And I thought, like, it was funny and it was, it was good and I, I, loved, I loved him for it, but I just felt like they went so minimal with it. It started to have a little bit of a kind of comedic element about it. And because it's it's weird because all of the other characters in this get so much screen time and so much dialogue, you feel like you don't know John Wick quite as well. And I, obviously it's down to the writing of the character, but I think even from an acting standpoint, maybe when it comes down to the dialogue and some of those more personable moments, um, Keanu Reeves isn't the best these, day, these days, I think, with that. I mean, obviously, in terms of the action, though, he's, he's in, he does an incredible job and he's perfect. He's perfect for this role. I would never want anybody else cast in this role other than Keanu Reeves. But I think for his character this time, they could have done a little bit, given him a little bit more engagement uh, in the story in terms of his dialogue, I think, because he just felt too minimal for the sake of it. So obviously, one of the negatives that you're probably going to hear most people talk about with this is the fact that this is a three hour John Wick movie. <laughs> And, you know, I knew this going in last night. I was so in the mood to see a film like this. I kind of prepared myself for it and knew what I was in for. And I had a great time with that. And I didn't, I didn't really feel the runtime as such because I was just having such a good time. But the movie does feel excessive and... It feels like a little bit overstuffed, I think, at times, you know. Some of these action set pieces here going on for like 15, 20 minutes where you just have hordes and waves of people that John Wick has taken out. It's probably a little bit much. I think they definitely could have cut some of those scenes down and maybe just a few, few too many story elements thrown in here as once. I did hear that originally this was going to be split into two movies. It was going to be films like a back-to-back -back kind of thing. And you can definitely feel here that there was obviously some ideas that they didn't want to miss out on. Like they have this character that's one of these guys who well, obviously John Wick, Wick is on this hit list and the price is going up, but the bidding to be able to, to kill him. And this guy's waiting for a certain price before he kills. And you kind of follow a little bit along with his story, but it just felt like even though it was cool, it was interesting seeing him, but it just felt like more unnecessary plot in an already overstuffed film. So I do think I should put that down as a negative, though. Realistically, it should have been a little bit shorter. They could have streamlined it a little bit more, and I think it would have made it more watchable because it's quite exhausting to some extent, like the amount of brutality and action and the colours and everything. It's, it's just it's a lot. It's a, it's, a, it's a film of excess. I don't know how to describe it better than that. Um, and it, it, it's too long. I think, yeah, I think they should have stuck with keeping this to two movies. I'm not sure the reasons why they didn't end up doing that. But I think overall, separating all the interesting uh, story elements they had in this film, separating it out, fleshing out those ideas more and doing it over two movies, I think would have been the better idea. There's definitely people that will watch this and find it difficult, I think, to suspend disbelief to the level that John Wick 4 expects you to. I mean, when you go into these John Wick films, you know, there is a sort of certain fantastical element about it, you know, considering what John Wick actually survives is pretty, is pretty insane. You know, you, if you're a really logical person, you probably look back and think he should have died in the first five minutes of, of the first film. We wouldn't have a franchise. But I'm willing to switch my brain off for that and accept that, you know, he's this kind of feared assassin that, you know, nobody should mess with. He's more skilled and more willing than anybody else. And you kind of, you get on board with that story. That's where the film expects you to suspend disbelief. But I think here, because of how over the top and how far believability is stretched, where John Wick has fallen off, you know, buildings, he's hit cars, he's been he's been shot, stabbed, thrown down flights of stairs headfirst. There's so many things where he sort of gets up and just completely unscathed, where you can't help but watch it and just think, come on now. <laughs> And the last thing I'll say is there is this after credit scene 
which I really didn't like, to be honest. It's just, it's something that if they, I can't really go into it too detail without um, spoiling anything, but it's something that if it had been dealt with earlier on in the film, I would have been fine with that. But it's just given this particular character that it shows, given where their story arc goes, to have that play out and then have this after credit scene, I, I just really didn't think work. I'd ra much rather they left that out, to be honest. And again, I can't spoil it, so I can't really discuss here what that was, but I'd be interested to see what people thought of that because I really don't think it worked given the story arc we got for this character that is shown in this final scene. So overall, this is another incredible addition to the John Wick franchise and absolutely a recommend from me if you like this kind of thing to go out and see. And, and this franchise really for me is a cut above, as I've said, all other action franchises we have at the moment. It's just something about the style of the way it's filmed, these characters, the music. I just love being sucked into this world and watching along for uh, for the ride because it's just something about it is just so engaging to me. It's so entertaining and I, I can't recommend this series of films enough. I really think that even if like me, you're not the biggest action person, you should definitely give these movies a chance because they are really quite something special. And John Wick Chapter 4 is no different. It's absolutely a recommend. I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5. I was, I'm so close to giving it a 4.5, but I think there is a few story elements and a, a few things that I was mixed about in here that just brings it down the tiniest bit, but still, nonetheless, another incredible uh, John Wick film. And it's probably so far my favourite movie of the year. So thank you very much for watching my review of John Wick. I am going to be doing a ranking for all four of the movies in this franchise next week, so look forward to that. And please do let me know what you thought of the new film, what were the things you liked about it, and what didn't work so well for you. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.